Good evening and welcome to Mustad Live on this glorious Friday evening. This evening I want to talk to you about uh, fitting heart bars and we're actually going to show a horse called Paddy which is a, a chronic laminitis. So that means he has some laminated changes that have taken place. So this evening I'm going to, going to modify a Libro shoe, 25 by 10 and I'm going to make the frog plates which is quite easy. You can buy them but you know I have a system that's quite easy to make them so we're going to do that. And we're also going to talk about this critical length of how do you decide what length this frog plate should be. Obviously that's off an x-ray, so we're going to do that. We're going to do the, the forging process. And then we're going to go and see Paddy and we're going to uh, shoot Paddy. So it doesn't matter really how you collect your data, but for me it's really easy is that now with modern technology I can simply use my iPad. I can take a picture of of Paddy's foot or I can have the old shoe and I can put my sizes on there which is really important because then when I make the shoes up the evening before I turn up to Paddy and the shoes should hopefully fit and also from the foot I can see his wear pattern and his heel pattern which we'll discuss at later date. So before we get started with the forging let's uh, jump into the powerpoint and uh, take it from there. So, welcome to the PowerPoint. So a heart bar is a precision shoe that should be fitted with extreme care and should only be fitted to properly marked up x-rays. It should be noted that a heart bar can cause further damage or rotation if it's fitted incorrectly. But I've had a lot of success with steel, aluminium and glue on heart bars. So the heart piece must be fitted accurately to a point just in front of the insertion of the deep digital flexor tendon. This is so that it's not putting pressure on the insertion point. So here's a, a well marked up x-ray. We have a wire which is a calibration length and that goes from the coronary band to the distal border of the wall. We also have a drawing pin that's used here which marks the true point of frog. So the first thing we need to do is check the founder distance. This is to see if, if the bone has lowered or sunk. So how we do this is we draw a line across from the the true hair junction which is marked with the marker and we measure down to the extensive process. Not to 10 is considered normal and you've got to remember that's an average distance and you know any available pre-laminitis x-rays to compare is, is a must. So now we need to find the insertion of this deep digital flex tendon. This is what we don't want to put pressure on. So we use the extensive process and drop this red line straight down and that shows us that. So now we measure from the marker on the sole or the, the point of frog and we measure back and we write that distance down. So let's say that's 10 millimeters and we've calibrized that off the scale of the wire. So we pick up the bottom of the foot and we put a, a dot that marks where the marker was. We measure back and we draw a line across. And this is where the point where we want, we're going to, to fit our heart bar. So next we put another measurement three quarters an inch back and draw a line across. And this is really important because, you know, you don't want to be, you know, you, for me a heart bar is accurate. And the reason I'm not, I'm a good shoemaker, the reason I'm not forging them, I'm going to fabricate them is it's got to fit the foot and it's got to be the right length. But anywhere in that area, you would get away with it, especially on a on one for, for more supportive measures, not, not laminitis. But if you drop behind that red line, you, you could cause further rotation. So it's really important that the heart bar is fitted to the, the proportions of the trim frog. We don't want to be over the sides because over the sides is going to put pressure on the solar plexus. So that's really important. So now we've done the PowerPoint, let's, uh, let's get some shoes made for Paddy. Right then, so let's make Paddy some new boots. So, like I said, I've got a Libro, uh, 25 by 10. I could have used eight, but because of this, I want to get a bit of help his heel landing. I want to help his toe. If it's a bit thicker, I can do a bit more uh, roller motion or equilibrium with that. I could have picked uh, an air shoe and took the clip off, but um, you know, you're going to see Paddy, he's got a good bit of wall and you know, these, I'm a Yorkshireman, so these are going to, I'm going to be able to refit them a little bit and you're going to put a lot of work into making shoes so you want to be able to reuse them. So what I've done quickly is just took the clip off. So what I like about this shoe, you can take it off and there's not a big hole, source hole. Um, 
So the first thing we need to do is get this to the size we want. So it's a little bit wide for Paddy, so I can quickly... Because this kind of fits Paddy's foot. So I can do that cold, I could do it hot, but you know, we've got to get on a bit as well, eh? You know, people always think I'm in a, I'm in a big rush. And I'm not really, I'm just, uh, I like to be efficient. So that's, that's pretty much what I want now for Paddy's foot. So I'm happy with that. So now we've got our little frog piece, which I'm gonna use uh, 20 by eight, which is three quarter, five sixteen. And I've got six and a quarter, and you're probably thinking, how did he figure out six and a quarter? So I'm gonna talk you through that now. I'm gonna put that in the fire there, and we're gonna get that hot. So that's in the fire. And uh, we've got a bit of a, a board here that I can show you. So, uh, we'll go back to uh, what we wanted, the frog plate. Uh, it's three and a half, and if we double that, that's seven inches. So the front plate is from top to bottom is 89 millimeters. If we double that, it's 178 millimeters. And it's quite simple if you use three quarter stock, you minus the section width. So times that length by two, that's that and that, minus the width of the section. So I'm using three quarter, which is 20. So I need six and a quarter. So that's three and a half plus three and a half is seven. Minus three quarters is six and a quarter. So that's 89 plus 89 is the total 178 minus 20 millimeters is 158. So that's how I figure out. So if the frog was four, you do four, four is eight. You'd probably use 25, which is inch. Then you tell off and you'd cut seven inch. And that's how I do it. You can use various sections. Uh, sometimes on a little pony, I use round bar. Round bar is really good. Again, just subtract the, the thickness of the, the width of the stock. So we've got our shoe, the paddy. Um, I could have a heat and roll my heels and my toe, but I'm gonna do that at the horse because I wanna assess him and I'm gonna trim him and walk him up and assess. So the first thing we do when we bring this out of the fire is we're just going to go up to the edge of the anvil, right on your dot, and we're going to give it a crack. We're not going to flatten it, we're just going to nip it, and that's going to help us bend it. And then with the heel of the hammer, I'm going to concentrate right on this edge. I'm going to bend it, and I'm going to forge it round, and um, it might go a bit wonky, and I'm going to fix that as we go along. It's no, uh, normally one or two heats. I'm going to take two heats and do it a little bit slower. Got it right. You know, it doesn't matter how many heats it takes me, uh, it's more about the, the process. Like I say, you can buy you can buy the frog plate, but I always find that the most important thing is that it's gotta be right for size. So it's no good paddy's frog is three and a half and we get a frog plate that we buy is two and three quarters, you know. So it doesn't take two minutes and it's a known fact that I've never met a horse that wears the front plate out, so when you uh, when you refit him, keep his old shoes, and you can take the front plate back out of that and put it back in. So put your glasses on, turn this off to keep it nice and quiet. So find your dot on the edge of the anvil, couple of little cracks like that, heel of the hammer in there. Don't worry about it at the moment, just get it round, round. Flatten it there, there. That's actually come together pretty nice. And if they're a bit odd at the end, you just simply stand it up and crack it like that. And that parallelizes them. So that's that. That's our first move. Um, I could have pointed that up and finished it, but we're going to get another heat and point that up. And I'm going to put a critical mark on the anvil. So, I think it's really important that we just simply get a ruler, 
I tend to put a long line so then it doesn't wear off. So that's the length of, of Paddy's frog. And now that's going to descend. That's his shoe against the anvil. And that's the length of his frog there. Um, I always take the front measurement as well to check that. Inch and a half, so that's right. So, so this is his frog plate. And when I forge this, it's going to be a little bit longer, which is fine because I'm going to weld it in and I'm going to grind the back square make it look crisp. So we put Paddy's shoe here because well, we need to open it up to fit the heels. So this is an acceptable heat. It's quite, it's quite quick and efficient. So now you're just simply pointing up. So point up there, point up there, edge it, edge it. to be perfect because we do have a thing called a grinder which is quite nice to use but because I'm forging right at the tip that opens up the back it's got nice strength there over the edge of the anvil give it a couple of little kicks to widen it up Come here, we're just gonna a bit of shape there and a bit of shape there. And match the frog. And that's good for length, because like you say, we're gonna square that up, so we're gonna we're gonna basically cut a line through that outside corner to get it square. So if it was there, it would it wouldn't be square at the back and it wouldn't look very good. I like it to look good. So I'm actually a little bit white, I can just try that in. And then from there, I'm gonna alter my heel checks now. And the critical now is, is I want that inch and a half. So by the time I alter my heel checks, that's just gonna slide through and we're gonna grind it all up. And that'll do Paddy. Let's go and uh, do some work on the grinder. Uh, grind these up a little bit now. So I want a nice soft end. And I want to flow it a bit. So, I've done my frog checks on my shoe. So now we try it in there now. And we can see now we're going to get a really good weld. And then once I've welded it, I'm going to square the back off and it'll look smart. And I've got scope with this shoe when I'm at the horse. Because, because this frog plate's got a V in it, I can widen the shoe, I can tighten the quarters, the heels. So though I've made this shoe to fit Paddy and I shouldn't do anything to it, I've still got room there that I can alter it. Whereas if, I, if this was a solid frog plate, I wouldn't be able to do that. So I have a nice welding bench, uh, get that frog plate lined up in there nice and square. So that's most important, I've checked my sizes. There's no good going to this effort and then doing it all wrong. So let's tack it and we'll see where we're at. So I'm just going to put a little spot of weld just in the centre there, just so there's no weakness. That's it. That's all welded up. So now we're just going to do a little bit of grinding. I'm going to square my back up, tidy up my welds. I've got some good welds on there. So I'm, going to, I'm not going to go over the top. I'm not a machinist. I'm just a barrier. But I'm going to leave a little bit of work, like I say, at the horse. So grind the back off.
that's that tidied up, squared my back off, I've done my weld. Uh, the other question is, is that you're probably thinking is this is eight mil, but the shoe's 10. That's for the simple fact that I have a bit of leeway with my frog plate. I can move that uh, down or away when I chew the horse. So uh, the only thing is, is uh, it needs some little studs. So I'm gonna do that now. Um, these are just literally tungsten pins. Um, you know what, you've got all this work, should we really have tungsten pins in? Um, uh, the owner wants to ride it, do a bit on the road, tarmac. So if she needs them, then happy customer, happy life, really. So it's not ideal, but there's worse things could happen to it. Right, so now we're sorted, we're gonna go and uh, see you at Paddy. Paddy's um, he's 28 year old, um, he's termed as a, a cob. Um, as we can see on his feet, he's um, he's overdue shoeing. He's he's got a week over, so he's on six weeks, which is is too long for him. Um, he has a wider heel space in the toe, so he's you know it's laminitic rings. He's got quite a large laminal wedge. He has a bit of a lump on the front here that we need to address. His soles is quite flat. Um, the heart bars I made, I, I did make to the to the previous X-rays, and I tend to a horse like this, I want X-rays of them every four months, five months, just to reliterate. So we're still working off x-rays from six months ago. And he's, um, he's quite a tricky case, but this is more what you deal with every day. Um, his wear pattern, he really rolls his heel off. So I'm gonna do that in the, in the modification of the shoe. And he wears his lateral toe. So again, we're gonna do that. Um, his soles, he's good. He's got a good concave there. And the last time he was x-rayed, four months ago, he had good sole depth. Um, but you'll see when he walks, he's overdue. He's coming over his shoes, so I need to give him a little bit more expansion. And um, I need to lower his heels and bring him back because he's landing very heel first. So just take him a little walk there, Brandon. But he's 28 year old, and the main thing is he's, uh, he's comfortable. That's the main thing. That's grand. So you can see when he walks, he lands on that heel, especially uh, on the right, he lands on the outside. He rolls it down. So he's, he's very high outside on this foot as well, so that reliterates what we've seen. But, uh, if anyone in the world could, uh, could chew a horse without uh, seeing it move, you know, I think you have to, you have to watch them move. So for me, just simply, I'm just going to do the frog a little bit. The ground's been really hard lately, so we're not going to overdo the feet. Um, in the past, he's had um, comfort mixing, which is really good. But at the moment, he's doing good, so we're not going to put that in. He has a little bit of frush in his other foot, so that's putting me off using that. But they have a new product called ZNO, which is really good for frush. And I did contemplate using that, but with this one weather I've decided we're quite happy. So the way I look at it with a laminate is, 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 is you know I've worked for years to, to get this depth back here and for me it's frogs dictating the plane of the ground. So I'm gonna lower his heels from the toenails back and I'm gonna bring his toe back through this laminal wedge. I'm not gonna vertically take that down because if a pedal bone sinks or rotates it it comes through at the point of frog. So this is the area we want to build two pillars of support. So just lower this. That's the outside we want to lower. Inside, I've got to lower but not as much because he was landing on the outside. Have a look. XL blue. I really like this rasp on the bottom of the foot and I'll use the green on the front. Edge that where we want. Looking better on the outside, it's still a bit high outside, 
So I'm going to do a little bit, then I'm going to do the other foot, and I'm going to walk it up. So I've really left off this front half, and I haven't done any sole digging there, you know. I don't think we should. But again, that's my personal opinion on horseshoeing. Set up the front one. And you'll see when we look at his wall, the reason I chose this shoe over an equilibrium is he's got a really good wall, he's got loads of wall. He's got a lovely thickness of wall there. So he can take a good shoe. So this one's a little bit frushy in the centre there, so they're gonna Epsom salt water that, clean it up, dry that up, a bit of sugar dain on it in between. You get that. It's really important with when you're actively fitting heart bars to feet that you maintain the natural frog composition. So let's lower the heels on this side again. Quick check of balance. You know, it's not good. I think you're saving time by not. You, you've got to check balance and check everything's lined up properly. I thought he was a good one for the most of life because he's, he's not easy enough to put all pick the perfect footed horses on the round. That's not what you see every day. So. But this is how I work every day, try to get efficient. again but the most important thing is this horse is comfortable and he's working 28 year old I think that's half the battle but yeah he's got stuff that's not ideal that's, that's life but he's doing all right so now I'm gonna swap to the green rasp and look for the side I'm just gonna bring his toe back a little bit now I'm a very much a little and often sort of person. I think this tour is going to take time to come back to where it should be. With the climate I live in, it's wet, it's dry, it's wet, it's dry. It really weakens the feet. I've chosen no clip on him because of this laminal wedge. I don't think there's any benefit to put a clip there. And I don't think there's any benefit to quarter clips on him. landing in two minutes. A bit of fresh hemorrhage in there at the toe. Standing back and looking at him, looking how he stood. Quite happy with that. When I look at the bottom of his foot, he's slightly more contracted inside, but with a bar shoe, obviously, I, I want to fit the centre of the stock, cover his bar, but I can box that a little bit round there and I can look at the bar I've made. 
for him. Outside's pretty good. Uh, I want to roll the heels off a little bit. I want to roll my toe off a little bit. Just got a bit of the inside corner on there that I want to bring back a little touch. Try to look at this coronet band and see where I'm going with that. So there's a little bit of work I can do with the shoe. I can forge the toe on the heel and that will get me that dead on side that I want. And then we're going to have a look and see where I've edged it. This is what I call the, the donkey work part of the magnetics, but it's got to come off. We have to promote that straight on tubules and get it back. And we have to keep on top of that. You know it's there, I just I just brushed it out with my fingertips. The rash, but you found me your hand and I don't that was maybe I'm just saying it, I don't have a lot of problem with this rash fogging. But I'm trying to take long strides as well because of the teeth. But I like to take longer pieces off. Like that, and that's it done. So have a look. And you can see. Then as soon as try one on, and then why it's getting hot, we'll have a look at him. Mainly the only reason I want to look at him walk is just for his heel height. So put the shoe on where I want it to be at the toe, and then we look round it. So at the moment, in the bar is slightly wide, but because of this, I can actually tighten that up a touch. The toe's pretty good. I'm gonna forge that off, flatten this, and I'm just gonna tighten up because the center of his heel is quite tight compared to the center of my shoe. So the outside's pretty good, my quarter's a bit early. So even though I sized them up, the heart bar's good for his x-rays, so that's good, I'm happy with that. So I have a little heat alter that. So I'll put that in. And we'll just fit it up. Brandon, let's just take a little walk up there and we'll just watch how he's landing on his heels. He's a lot better, he's landing a lot flatter now. Uh, it's on a camber here, so you've got to watch on that hill, he's going to land on the outside, but uh, a lot better. Right, so I'm happy with that. Now the balance, um, have another little one two over him a little bit high just here he was and I think I'll get that with the burn but that's the basics I've left his front half intact I've left as much solar depth there as I can uh, I've got a good frog to get a little bit of frog pressure I want to fit the center of these heels and I want to support that frog and I want to basically kiss that um, like two lips kissing I don't want to be burnt into that so it's really loads of pressure I want to be just pushing on it so when he descends he has active pressure there not too much I've chose my nail which fits really good is a is a concave five so I've got that set up so let's uh, let's get them fit up now so let's get them fit up so I've got to remember what I need to do I need to I want him in 
help his heel landing, so I'm going to smooth the back half, um, and I'm also going to smooth his break over. I'm going to do that with a hammer, um, and then I'm going to fit it, and then I've got to alter the shape. So I'm going to do the modification to the toe and the heel first. I'll show you. I've got a reasonable heat there. I'll put the other shoe in so I'm always working at two at once. So we just need to. Roll the heel off, and then outside toy here. I do that away from myself. And his wear pattern was just from the inside nail hole round. There, they want to tap there. 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 So I've got his roll off the toe, I've got roll off the heel, so that's nice on the back, toes rolled off, I've got plenty of heat there. At the moment I'm going to the foot with the frog, prep, frog plate flat and then I can always add more frog pressure to it. But the way I look at it is I've trimmed level with the frog, so I should be pretty much there. So we'll try it on. So outside's really good. Inside, a touch not quite in the centre, but the outside's in the centre, the inside's not. So I'm just going to tap that on. Remember that area there. And then we go back. Just ease this ever so tight. That's the first time I've knifed his foot at all. So just ease that. You know, at this stage, if we needed to ease this, I would be seating the shoe out, not. But the shoe comes seated, so I'm quite happy. It's just starting to kiss the frog. So, no more. Burning now, just checking the bit. And I'm happy with that. It's just kissing the frog at the front half. Not quite at the back, at the front. So I'm just gonna tip the tip away and just apply pressure at the back. Because I've got a thinner plate, it's there. She'll make all the difference to it. Well, I've got a nice bit of pressure now, so I can see my burns quite nice. Now, the outside's further back the heel because I've had to lower his outside to get him level. And that's fine, we'll, we shoe the perimeter then and we'll box this off. See the shoes nice and seated, so it's not touching the sole, that's good. And we'll give that a little try. Turn the fire down, you don't want to be cooking shoes, so the glass is on, really important.
that hill. Like I say, once these little studs in, but I'm gonna put them in really flat. They're just for a little bit of traction, nothing more. Out me than uh, me happy. So the last thing this horse wants is big studs. I'm gonna, gonna contact that really, really, really far in. They're doing very little. They have an effect on a hill, but nothing more. Don't an effect on a flat surface. No. Like I say, we've got all this work and we're trying to help that. Why would you put big studs in? So, and that's how we're job there so let's fit the other shoe it's all about memory remembering what you've got to do so again same do your modification first so back and i really like it with a with the square back on you'll see what i mean in a minute it really covers the foot well on the heel and a real nice heel to fit so And if I find that, if I push the tongs against the anvil and hammer there, it's a lot better than, uh, than doing it than doing it this way. I find I get it better. But if you had a solid fog plate, you, you wouldn't be able to fit the back of that now. Um, you'd really struggle. So carry her on. Of heat in this, so looking at where my toe is to fit my toe first. You know, principles of horseshoeing. But what I mean is, when you've you've got this really hooky heel, so actually to fit that and cover it, if you were shoeing it with a normal shoe, you'd, you'd just about want a reverse heel on it. So actually, if you look at my heart bar, it's like a reverse heel heart bar. So I get a lot of cover there, which is what I want. So I really like that. Again, outside's good, inside. Not quite quartered right, and my frog plate is just lying off to one side, so I need to alter that. So my frog plate wants to move to the inside, so I'm gonna So again, I haven't eased his sole yet. We're just gonna gentle with the knife. Just ease these little burn areas and I start to look at it and I think I don't wanna be giving this foot very much burn. So I'm gonna be very careful of that. So now I've overdone it now. My frog plate now wants to go the other way. It wants to be in the center there. So just back to the anvil, don't panic. Go that way, so just put your tip there. Move it back. That's literally pushing it across. What you can do is, if, if it needs a lot of movement, is heat the middle up, but cool out the sides, and then move the plate. But I think I'll have about it now. No point in going to all that work, making a heart bar fit, and putting it in the wrong place. That's better now. tight in the bar so I can just do that and that opens the back, just opens the beast. That will cool that. Glasses 
Zam. Yeah, and I want them really flush, you know, it's for, uh, probably for the owner's peace of mind than anything else. Right. So the nail I've picked is a, is a concave five. It really does fit nice in that groove. Um, the liberal groove is quite shallow, but it's uh, it, that fits good and it's very flat. And that's, that's what this horse wants. So, have a look at them. So I'll have a look where I've fitted it and see where I'm happy. Now the most important thing is I've put heel nails in first in this because it's going to want to nail back so going to want to suck back on you so I'm going to put heel nails in first so that'll hold it again So people would say, you know, why would you use this nail right on the widest part there? Because for me, this horse, you need to anchor the back of the foot there. If you anchor the front, that's where the laminar wedge is. You don't want to be anchoring that. It's not already growing. It's got no blood supply, so it's dead. So I've anchored the back there. And now I'm just tapping on. And like I say, this was set up to... These were fitted to x-rays. So this frog plate was perfect for him, for the x-ray. And in the next couple of months, I'll be wanting some more x-rays of him to make sure that we're in the right direction. But he's happy and he's sound for a 28-year-old. He's, he's doing good. You know, there's been a lot of debate lately about this sole here. Like, you know, I leave that and protect it. Why trim all that out to then put back a pad? The horse is holding its soul to, for protection there. The soul of depth. So just check you're happy with the fit. And just general, I don't need to block that down, but they're pretty flush. And he stood on that and he's got a little bit there. Toenail could go up a little touch, but you know, it's not gonna really be detrimental to him. Let's grab my box. James will have a look around that. Look around the back of it, James, while I start this one. But I like that old uh, bold heel. Like a reverse heel heart bar, really. To be honest with you, I like it. Like I said, not the, the easiest horse in the world to show, but you know, it's a bit more what we come across every day. Tricky. Chronic laminitic, keeping it sound. And though I'm a great shoemaker, could I fit this foot as good with a handmade? No, no. 
uh, I want to give her a hot rate. I've got all my wear pattern in there. You know, I think that's important we match the horse's wear pattern. Not frog plates in the centre now. It's nice. Good. What we'll change one nail? So we'll change that. I think it's good to aim for perfection. Not always achievable, but it's good to aim for it if you can. That's just a bit lower. I do like these concrete nails on the pitch. Anything like that. That's that. Goes round him nice. He's got that good heel, heel corner of support. Come on, now the bit I hate. Which is the clenching. But God, I'm good at it. Yeah, I could use a groover actually, um, if I can avoid it. Gentle bring this back. I'm just slightly rounding his hoof wall off. You know, I did a study on that and it does increase and promote solar depth by doming the hoof wall. So in this case I'm gonna that's a plus point, I'm gonna do that. I'm just gonna set my clenches up. Set that up. Try not to hammer him because I think these laminitics don't really like hammering so you can just I know I've got my pro finish now. And I'm very much, I always dress the toe back to the shoe on these sort of horses. I think that the hoof one, the hoof wall needs compression to keratinize. So if you set the shoe back and don't weight bear it, they always go mushy and mealy. So we'll dress it back and then the owner will treat this now with iodine. Really pushing them in nice. Use my pro finish. We always use a finishing wrap. Really speeds up that finish and puts excellent dressing on it. Yeah, a bit of damage to his wall, that's why he walked around really. You should have this horse on matting and not walk around. I wanted to show you. We've still got some more work to do on this wedge at the top, but for me, um, Rome wasn't built in a day, so that is all in time. We need time to do that. I'll snip around there. Just him up. Here we go. But I think, as a general rule, when I when I look at this, it, it follows the foot nice. It, it supports him nice. Um, and I think I'm happy with uh, with the way it goes around him. Um, you know, it's not a fairy competition, so it doesn't matter if you have to take a little bit of this toe back. I think for everyday work, I like to do that because I have the, the comfort there, the cushion of it.
But like I say, I've tried all sorts with these and this horse in particular has had, he's had glue on steel heart bars before. He's also had glue on aluminium heart bars before. You know, this horse is 28 year old. He's had comfort mix before. Actually, you could say he's had a lot of dental impression material. And at the moment with the good management, which is really important by the owner, I don't mean he, he will be all the time, but we're doing good. But I think what I would hope that people have got out of this from around the world is that You've got to be organised with horses and it's good to have uh, the sizes written down or pictures. Um, you know, do the work at home, even though we did the work at home with this. We've, it still took us time to shoe this today and you know you need to charge accordingly for that. This is remedial, remedial shoeing. Nicely, just let the rats do the work, just to ease them, cut the lines out, and I think. Get a polish on your shop window, as I say. in the centre of his frog and um, it fits him you can look down it goes round it nice I've given him a little bit more support than I had before for expansion which I think will suit him uh, it's got the roller motion it's a, a fabrication but it's a, it looks tidy um, so little walk please Brandon Catches out outside to on that thing, Clyde. But um, I put him down a lot flatter. He's uh, definitely um, made an improvement with the old boy. So, um, so that leaves me just to say, um, you know, thanks for tuning in on your Friday evening. I know everything's getting a little bit back to normal now. We certainly are. We're, we're busy now with racing and uh, the industry's is getting going. It's strange times though. But um, you know, thank you to Mustad. Uh, my sponsor Heller and Mustad, the team for for um, promoting these videos and for what they do for our industry uh, through learning. I hope you've learned something from it and you can take something into your everyday farry and uh, 